I recently entered my first ever game jam, Ludum Dare 56. I chose to participate in the compo, which meant that I only had 48 hours to make a game completely from scratch, including all assets by myself, and it was a really fun experience. I filmed the entire development process so you can see me get more and more stressed as I get closer to the deadline. <laughs> Ludum Dare takes place over a weekend, so in my case, from Friday at 6 p.m. till Sunday at 6 p.m. It's a bit after 8 p.m. on the first night of Ludum Dari. This is my first ever game jam I'm attempting to enter. I have no idea how this will go. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm excited. <laughs> the theme for the jam is tiny creatures, and I've just spent a bit of time trying to brainstorm some different ideas, and I have one I kind of like. So my concept for this is taking the idea of your girlfriend or partner asking you, would you still love me if I was a worm and making that into some sort of game. I think it will be kind of a mix of like poem based narrative screens and then also little WarioWare style mini games where you learn to take care of your girlfriend in her new form and support her in her warm life. I have some general plot points written down, but I think for tonight, I just want to explore doing a little bit of art and trying to figure out how that might work. And also maybe writing some sort of code to display text because I haven't done that before. So let's get into it. I went to low spec and look for pretty small color palettes because I thought that would help me get a consistent and good looking style with limited art skills and limited time. I found a few that I thought could work because they all had pink that I could use for a worm and I brought them into a sprite to test out. And I made a Godot project and decided on a resolution. I'm thinking that the opening to the game will be something like I woke up one morning and realized you had changed. I can't believe this actually happened and then like pan up from like a bed to show a worm on a pillow. So maybe I should think about what that would look like. Now I started trying to work on the art for the initial scene I had in mind. I didn't really know what art style to go for here, but I knew it had to be pretty simple because I'm not that experienced with art and I had very limited time to make a bunch of different things. I even briefly decided to try doing a 3D art style, which made no sense and I quickly bailed out on that. <laughs> I ended up deciding to do kind of sketchy pixel art style in a sprite. I mean, for less of a pixel art style, I can kind of do some sort of loosey goosey style like this, maybe something like that. <laughs> so I drew out this initial scene and then brought the art into Godot and figured out how to use the animation player to animate the initial panning shot I had in mind. Doesn't look great, <laughs> but. It's fine, it's fine. We have to start somewhere. I briefly considered switching to a grayscale color scheme here, but instead decided to switch to one of the more limited color palettes I had found before on low spec. I then wanted to work on a system to display the story text. So I made a nine patch rect sprite in a sprite and brought that into Godot. Then I learned about the rich text label in Godot, which makes it really easy to add fun effects to your text, kind of like in RuneScape, the wave effect there. So I decided to use that for my labels. I then found a pixel art font that would fit the aesthetic I had in mind. I spent a bit of time here just trying to configure things so that the text box would properly expand depending on the size of the included text. I tweaked the initial animation to make it feel more dramatic by showing text first and then starting the pan. And I also faded in the text. I then wrote a method that would animate in the text character by character. That's fine, that's fine. We don't need this to be perfect. <laughs> I have to remember it does not have to be perfect. <laughs> I think I might be spending too much time on the polish before even making anything. <laughs> I also just spent a bunch of time here thinking about the wording of the opening line of text. I woke up one morning and realized you had changed. And that is a thing throughout the whole game jam. I spent quite a bit of time just working on the actual text itself, which makes sense, I guess, because it was a narrative based game. I then made a simple sound effect that played back when the text rendered, and this was meant to be temporary, but <laughs> it wasn't. Well, almost 1 a.m. now, and this is my game. <laughs> this might not go so well, but at least I have a fun opening. At this point, it was almost 1 a.m., and I wanted to make sure I got some sleep, so I decided not to do too much more. I started on drawing some art for a second screen, but I wasn't super happy with how the the animation was looking, so I decided to just stop and come back the next day. Maybe I just need to come back to this tomorrow. All right, so I'm back. I'm not sure how this is going to go because all I have is just this opening, which is kind of fun, but it's not really a game. <laughs> and I think I might have scoped out too much to add. I have a whole doc with like a bunch of ideas kind of for the story and maybe I made the story too intense as well, but we'll see how it goes. I'm also getting started kind of late. I didn't sleep very well, couldn't fall asleep because I was thinking about the game and yeah, let's just keep going. <laughs> I started out by finishing the heart screen I had started working on the previous nights and making a more simple animation. All right, I really need to figure out the structure of this. I think I need 
separate scenes for each level so that I can have some that are just animations and some that are actually mini games, but I need to figure out how to structure that. I think being tired is not helping, but if I get this down, then I think the rest should be a bit easier to get working here. I decided on a system where I would have one main scene that would manage instantiating the other sequences as the player moves through them. And each sequence scene would inherit from a base sequence class that would provide some shared functionality. Then when a sequence is done, it would just emit a finish signal that the main scene would listen to. And when it gets that signal, it would unload the current sequence and load the next one. And then I added the second sequence with the heart and more dialogue. I also made a base sequence scene that I just would duplicate to more quickly get things going for each new sequence because I knew it would have a bunch of them for the story. At this point it was 2 p.m. and I only had two story sequences in the game. This took a long time, but I think we'll be okay, hopefully. I wonder if I can make it more obvious when you can click by animating the text box a little bit. And to do that, I just made the text fade in and out slowly in opacity once it's done rendering. I got that working using a tween and I spent a bit of time here just tweaking it to make it feel right. I think I should probably get lunch because it's like 3.30. <laughs> I came back from the lunch break at about 4 p.m. and I knew I really had to get a lot done. <laughs> One thing I need to do is have some sort of opening scene because right now it just jumps right in and that might not be the best if you're just clicking play. So I should probably have a like start scene that tells you to click to get through the game. So I made smart for that and put it into the game. At this point, I thought it would be good to have the story of the game feel kind of complete so that it had a beginning and an end. So I decided to work on what I was imagining as the end screen for the game. I have an idea for an end scene where the worm is going off into the sunset with another worm or maybe multiple worms. So I think I should do some art for that quickly. So I made some art for the worm sunset scene and I added that as a sequence with some dialogue. So we have a beginning and an end, but no middle. <laughs> It's fine. I then made the art for another pre-ending scene I had outlined where the worm disappears from your home and leaves behind a letter. And I added that to the game as a sequence with some more text. I spent a bunch of time again here just thinking about phrasing and what I wanted each word in the story to say because it was important because it's a narrative based game. In the end, maybe the real question was never, would you still love me? But instead, how would your love evolve? I don't know. I mean, I kind of like it, but. <laughs> It's a little goofy. We still need to add actual gameplay to this. I made the text rendering speed based on how many characters were actually in the string to make things feel more consistent throughout the dialogue. At this point, it was about 6.30 p.m. and I was feeling really, really exhausted because I didn't sleep much the night before. So I decided to try to take a nap. Okay, so it is quite a bit later. I ended up taking a nap and getting dinner and I'm still pretty tired. I just did not sleep well last night and I don't really have much of a game yet. There's something happening here, but it's not really a game. <laughs> I want to add some sort of mini games now and the text and story isn't really final, but I do like the aesthetic of this. I'm just not sure if it's going to pull it together or not, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> At this point, I was feeling a bit in the pit of despair. I didn't see how my game would actually come together and I was almost feeling like quitting, but I knew I didn't actually want to do that. and I could see the potential in the game, so I decided to just keep going and hope for the best. I updated the start button to look a little bit more like a start button, hopefully, and I added some title text. I decided then to work a bit more on the ending screen because I thought it would be good to convey that the worms were indeed tiny creatures by kind of zooming out on them leaving in the sunset and showing them in the context of the original bedroom. So I wanted to try to figure out an animation for that. I don't know if the ending makes sense, but we can fix that later. Uh, let's try to think of some mini games. <laughs> Feels a little overwhelming right now, honestly. Almost 11 p.m. now and only have until tomorrow at six. One of my mini game ideas was trying to make the home more comfortable for your worm partner by filling it up with dirt. So I decided to try to work on that one. Maybe you just have to dump dirt on the bed. <laughs> really just coming on the fly here. I made some art in a sprite for the bag of dirt, which I for some reason called soil, but later turned back to dirt. <laughs> and then I made the minigame sequence animate in with some starting text. And then I started working on the actual dirt minigame. Maybe you just have to like fill up the whole room with dirt. Now I just need to like shoot out particles from this, I guess. I made a dirt particle scene with a collision object. And then I just spawned them on a timer based on the location of the dirt bag while the mini game is active. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe it should be a circle. And then I just made it so that you win the mini game when enough dirt particles reach a certain area in the screen. 
I decided to make it so that when you win a mini game, some more text plays back and then you click to continue to the next sequence. With just the addition of this one mini game, it felt like things were actually coming together a lot better than it had just a few hours ago, but I still had a lot more work to do. I think we need another mini game. <laughs> I think I'll just code one more before trying to go to bed because I really didn't sleep well last night. And then tomorrow, hopefully I can add like two more mini games and maybe make some sort of music, very simple music on my guitar for a background track. Yeah, this is tricky. It's gonna be stressful tomorrow for sure. So the other ideas I had were dressing the worm in new style. So maybe they're discovering themselves, supporting the worm, find more friends like them. So kind of scrolling through Instagram and liking all the photos that include the worm with other worms. Also just researching worms. I'm not sure what the mini game is for that. I feel like the Instagram one could be fun. So maybe think about that one maybe. So I made some art for a phone frame and I made some sample worm photos. <laughs> I brought the art into the dough and started thinking about how to make Make the phone screen scroll when the player moves their mouse. Okay, that might work. I then made a heart sprite that would show up when you liked the photos. I also made it so that if you double clicked on photos, it would like them. And I used tweens to animate in the sprite and made it wiggle once it's active. And then started working on trying to make the scrolling of the phone screen work. I got it working, but it didn't feel amazing. <laughs> that, that actually kind of works. I should probably improve this, but it's a good start for this one. Like, this is pretty wonky scrolling. Great, right, it's almost 2.30 now, so I should really sleep soon, but I'm not sure if it's clear enough what to do here. I also tried to make it more clear what you should actually do by making a gray version of the heart that would then change to color once you clicked on the photo. I also made the gray heart scale up on hover to make it clear that you could interact with it. To make it easier to understand what to do, I also wanted to switch from double clicking on photos to like them to just single clicking, but that was tricky to implement with the scrolling behavior because then photos would get liked as you were scrolling and I wasn't loving how things were working there. At this point it was almost 3 a.m. and I was very tired so nothing I was doing was really making any sense. <laughs> it's like 3 a.m. right now. I want to try to sleep kind of a normal amount and the game jam ends at 6 p.m. tomorrow and I haven't done basically any audio or music. I want to add two more different mini games and I'm not satisfied with how the scrolling stuff is working here so bit of a panic but I love like how the style of the game looks, so at least that's good. But yeah, this is tricky. I haven't done this before. 48 hours to make a game and not stay up all night. And yeah, it's a lot of work, a lot of messy code, but I think I will be happy with the final result, even if it's not perfect. I added the story text to the sequence for and after the mini game started and also the fade in animation for the sequence. And I added some code to detect if the player had completed the mini game by liking all the photos. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. <laughs> I don't know how much I'll get done tomorrow, but hopefully enough. <laughs> All right, I'm back after not getting that much sleep again. And fortunately now I only have about six hours to finish this up and get it submitted. And I'm a little nervous, but I already have something kind of complete on its own, even if it's not fully what I want. So I just need to keep going with my spaghetti code, polish things up, add some sound, add some more animations. Uh, there's a lot to do, so I guess I'll just get to it. <laughs> this is gonna be a little time crunchy, I think. Worm activities? I don't know what worms do. Maybe they're going to a concert. I started out by just drawing some more images for the photo liking mini game and I added those to the game. And I added a little animated scroll icon to hopefully make it more clear that you needed to scroll down the screen to like all the images. Really like to make the scrolling better, but I think I might have to come back to that after I do more stuff because It'd be better to get more things in, probably it's it's workable. So I have an idea for a mini game that's like researching worms to learn more about them. So I guess we'll try to work on that one. The idea for the game is basically I'll just have like a stack of objects and then you can grab them, drop them on the desk and it will open them to read them. So I drew up some art for that and made a new sequence in Godot. I made some art for the books in a sprite and brought those in as well. I made a book scene with this art and started brainstorming some ideas for the book text that would go on the side. Okay, and now the idea is that you pick one up and drag it over there. You drop it on the desk and it transforms into an open book, I guess. I made the books draggable physics objects that you could move around, but I still wasn't sure what the gameplay should actually be. Oops, oh no. I realized I had to teleport books back on the screen if they got pushed out. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> They'll just come back on the screen. I then decided to take a brief lunch break. All right, so we have a little less than four hours left. I need to somehow make this a mini game. I need to fix up the ending a little bit. I need to add music and sound effects. And I wanted to add another mini game, a dress up mini game, but I don't know if I'll have time for that. I also wanted to fix the scrolling. Oh, uh, there's, there's a lot here. I think thinking about this, I might switch this up so that the goal here is to like throw the books into a brain. So I need to make art for that. So I drew up some art for a brain 
brought it into Godot. I want to make it so that when the books enter the brain, they just kind of float, but you don't knock them out, basically. I was able to get the no gravity thing working pretty easily by just putting an area 2D on top of the brain and turning off gravity for things that enter that area. That worked a lot better than I thought it would. Then I just added some code to check if all of the books were overlapping the area around the brain, and then the player wins the game. Then I wrote some narrative text for the level as well. I spent some time here just thinking about the whole script for the game in general again and making some tweaks, but I realized I really needed to keep moving on. It was now 2.45 p.m. and I really wanted to add another mini game, but I realized I did not have time. <laughs> I decided it was important for the story I was going for to indicate that the non-worm partner was still happy with their life and changing in a happy way. So I wanted to add at the end of the game another really brief scene showing that the person's okay. <laughs> I made some art for a scene with the original bedroom but with a bunch of new things to indicate that they've gotten a bunch of new fun hobbies. And then I had to come up with some script text for that final scene. And then I added that plus some animations to the end of the game. Yeah, this is tricky. <laughs> I really wish I had a little bit more time but I guess that's how probably all game jams go. Oh yeah, scrolling. I decided it was important to improve the scrolling feel a bit so I added a lerp to make it feel a bit nicer and make keep scrolling after you let go of the mouse. And I also made it a bit less likely that you would accidentally like all the photos as you were scrolling. Still wasn't perfect, but I felt it was acceptable. <laughs> I'm under two hours. We're not making another game. We just need to finish up, make sure the dialogue is good and maybe add some sound effects. I played through the game a few times just to make sure I was happy with all of the narrative in the text and I ended up tweaking some of it here. I probably spent too much of my now very limited time here just tweaking the final lines of the game. Uh, writing endings is so hard. I added a final sequence to the game, it was just the end that played after the whole game was done, and then when you click, it just takes you back to the beginning. And I played through it again to make sure everything was working. So it was now after 5 p.m. and the game jam ended at six, so I had less than an hour to figure out music. All right, I need to try to make some sort of music here. I only have a tiny bit of time here. Hopefully we can do something. I want something for the main game and then something for the end if I can. I spent a bit of time here just going through different guitar tones and trying to find an ambient sounding tone that would match the feel of the game. Then I just started improvising some very simple things on guitar and recording myself. Then I went through what I had recorded and tried to find any good bits that I could maybe use for the game. I found three different sections that seemed like they could work and I tried to make some of them into seamless loops, but that wasn't working perfectly. I didn't really know what I was doing and it was already 5.30, meaning that I had only 30 minutes left to get the music into the game and load it in the proper places. So I realized I just did not have time to get things working perfectly. <laughs> Okay, we don't have time to do anything here. So I brought in the tracks that I thought were okay into Godot and started trying to figure out which one to put as the main theme of the game. Initially, I set a kind of happier sounding loop as the main music for the game and I was going to leave it at that, but then I realized it could be a lot cooler if I had a more somber sounding loop for the main part of the game, switch to a more ominous one when the partner leaves and then switch to a happy one at the end. It was actually 5.52 when I decided that I wanted to do this with the music. And I literally wrote the code to do the music transition between these three different songs at 5.57 p.m. So three minutes before the deadline. All right, I guess it's working and now it's time. So I guess this is the game. So I finished exactly on the dot. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> now time to get it submitted. After the compo ends, you have an hour to get your game submitted to the Ludum Dari site. So I uploaded the game to itch.io and set things up there. And then I made the page for the game on the Ludum Dari site. I decided to call the game, Would You Still Love Me? Right, so I think everything is uploaded. Now I just need to make a better cover image and then I will probably be sleeping for the rest of the week. <laughs> but yeah, what an experience. I think I'm happy I did it. <laughs> but I am exhausted. At the time of making this video, the rating period hasn't ended yet, so I'm not sure how the game will do, but it's been really fun to see everyone's feedback on the game and people seem to be really enjoying it. So I'm really thankful to everyone who has played it and has left a comment, it means a lot. I was also happy to see my game featured on itch.io's page about the Ludum Dari event. And yeah, it's been cool to see people playing it there as well. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, I'll have it linked in the description. And if you entered the gym, 
and the rating period hasn't ended yet, I'd really appreciate your feedback over on the Lunum Dari website as well. I think for my first game jam, this went really well. I didn't build a super complicated game, but I was able to make a whole experience in only 48 hours, and I'm happy with how it turned out. This also confirmed that I really like building narrative-based games, so I also want to do more of that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.